You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. But there are some studies out here. And one of the things that I've always been interested in that I've not really talked that much about is myosin in the body. Mm -hmm. Now, myosin, if you guys have ever seen one of those pictures of like the most ripped rat or the kangaroo that's just all muscle, um, they're using uh, technology to knock out genes so that those animals have tons and tons of myosin in them that they put on uh, muscle uh, like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, myostatin so, knockouts. They're uh, like yeah, bulls. They're knockouts. absolute, you know, super ripped, shredded bulls, which is oh, which yeah, the bulls, why I keep my yeah. bullish figure. <laughs> right. Uh, it, it, of course, uh, the bulls. I, in fact, I think they were the first ones there, but I've seen it in multiple animals now, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. So bodybuilders forever have been saying, how do I control uh, this myosin? And well, it looks like you have a study on your fullerenes and ATPAs and yeah. So there's muscles. some there's some interesting things that go down there. And well, it looks like you have a study on your fullerenes and ATPAs and yeah. So there's muscles. some there's some interesting things that go down there that I I have cautioned people about and because the the way I figured this out, and I, I'm sure I've probably mentioned it before, was by pulling my, my muscles in my uh, back and tearing my hamstring twice uh, because you are able to activate so much uh, skeletal muscle that you just, you're not normally able to do that. So it, it creates a, a function called super precipitation of skeletal muscle lactamycin. So it's uh, basically, it's in training all of your sarcomeres and those are the kind of little muscle fibers. And so in terms of changes to your actual musculature it doesn't have the appearance of much but in terms of skeletal muscle activation the recruitment goes off the charts and and the problem is it's a dose dependent curve so one of the one of the studies that came out showed a very dose dependent curve to that and so you can do these sort of ridiculous you know captain america kind of lifts and things like that problem is chondrocytes really, you know, I mean, you don't, you, you don't really pump out enough ligaments and tendons at the pace you need to, to keep up with muscle recruitment. That's suddenly a two, three, four X factor. And I'm the, <laughs> the poster child for the, uh, the silly injury where I ended up on the ground, literally, you know, holding my back as I cracked up because I realized what it was and remembered that study. So <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. You and me both uh, have had this problem uh, for different reasons. I talked about this uh, just on the last episode with, uh, I think it was with Chris Shade. A few years ago, I put on 29 pounds of muscle in I six weeks. I remember that. The chondrocytes <laughs> are, the, um, are the, the, the cells that are making bone and connective tissue. So what's going on there is, is literally you can put on muscle too quickly. So it's not really about the muscle. It's about the connective tissue. And if you do Qigong, or Nigong, which is even better than Qigong for that kind of stuff, or Tai Chi, or even some forms of yoga, you can get really strong ligaments. And you ever see those weird um, like Shaolin guys who can do a handstand on one finger without any muscle mass? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It should be impossible. That's the other kind of stuff. So can you make the chondroitin strength <laughs> formula for me? Because I want that. I think that's something you probably have to do with lasers. So, which actually I, I really do. We've been working on. Shouldn't you do this when you say lasers? Laser. You're right. There exactly. Right. <laughs> I'm going to go hop in my Bob's big boy rocket shortly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the thing with that is I've, I've been playing with that a lot. And I, I've done, I think, uh, five different stem cell procedures using V cells, the very small embryonic like stem cells yep. Yep. in the lab here, because those things are aces, man. I, after having COVID, I had myocarditis and I could not function well. My heart was just super impinged. And I, after the- You should have called me. I know how to hack that. Yeah, it was it was a bitch, man. I I, uh, I tried quite a few things and it I ended up going back and doing the V-cell thing. And I did, after the third procedure, it was a night and day difference. I was able to run up flights of stairs as opposed to literally having to stop after one flight, catch my breath, and then schlep myself up to the second flight. So I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that, but the real crux of that is, is actually using lasers to simulate things. Cause I mean, you and I've talked for, you know, like years and years now, humans are not just muscle and bone. I mean, we're, we're this aggregate system with, you know, photonics and, you know, chemicals and biochemical interactions and magnetics and electronics. I mean, you can get, you can really do an amazing amount of stuff if you're willing to tap all of the available resources now.